Whenever you feel lonely, whenever you feel like you don't quite fit anywhere, if you're looking for a book, I think this is the book to read. Virginia Woolf's Orlando. Orlando is about journeys. It's about transformations, you know, and um, it takes you. It's so evocative. It takes you, transports you into so many different places and so many time, different time zones. But most importantly, as I said, this is a book about not quite fitting anywhere being multiple, being fluid. To me, it is about threshold, you know, that very liminal space in between things. And that space actually can be a very productive place for art, but at the same time, it's a very lonely place for the artist. So today I'm going to talk about Orlando, not as a popular male name, but Orlando the book, the novel written by Virginia Woolf and published in 1928. Many times readers ask me what are my favorite books, what are the books that shaped me, and it's always difficult to choose one or just a few titles, uh, and there's so many books that have left an impact on me for different reasons. But if I have to choose a book, I, I think Orlando will always be amongst my top 10 you know, favorite uh, books. It's interesting that this novel, when it came out, it, uh, when it was published, it was introduced as a biography, even though it's one of the most creative and experimental works of fiction ever. It is also a feminist classic. I have read Orlando numerous times throughout my life, both in Turkish and in English, but I think I will never forget the first time I encountered the novel. Back then, I was in Turkey, I was young, I was a student. I wanted to become a novelist and I didn't quite know how. So when I read Orlando, it really left an impact on me. You know, it shook me because until then, I did not know that you could write fiction with such freedom. You know, I didn't know that you could write fiction in this way. So I think I will always associate this novel with water. For me, it is a fluid book. It just wants to flow and it wants to go beyond all kinds of boxes of norms and forms. It is the kind of novel that wants to transcend. It wants to transcend boundaries, whether, whether it's regional or geographical or class or time related. So whether it's spatial or tempor temporal boundaries, it wants to go beyond them. And of course, it also wants to go beyond gender boundaries. So I will always associate Orlando with freedom, with a sense of freedom. Now, there's a bit of gossip surrounding the novel. When it was published, people were talking about whether it was about um, Virginia Woolf's friend, a good friend, and also lover, Vita, Vita Sackville West, who was a writer, an essayist, a poet, and she was also openly bisexual. So their relationship was something that many people have talked about, that also people have been writing about. It's interesting that years later, Vita's son, Vita Sackville's son, said that Orlando, the entire novel, was in a way a love letter written by Virginia Woolf and dedicated to his mother. So I find those details important as well. But perhaps more importantly, by the time she wrote this book, Virginia Woolf was so tired of conventional forms of literature. You know, she had run, she had, she had published, she had written great books, uh, but there was a, always an expectation as to how a novel should be written. And she was tired of uh, those boundaries as well. So in other words, she wanted to experiment with the form. And that is one of the many, many reasons why I love this novel so much, because it is the kind of book that dares to take risks. It dares to go into uncharted territory. Now, we talked about the background, we talked about the form, let's talk about the story. At the heart of this book, there is Orlando, who is a nobleman living at the court of Elizabeth I. He's a poet and he's working on a poem. It's interesting that throughout the story, as the story unfolds, the poet will change, will go through lots of transformations, but so will the poem, you know. Uh, so it's the journey of a poet, but it's also the journey of a poem. And he experiences loves and heartbreaks. He falls in love with a Russian princess. He, he meets along the way lots of colorful characters. 
uh, there's this fascinating scene when Virginia Woolf, the author, uh, describes the great frost uh, in which birds freeze in midair and they fall to the ground like stones. So the descriptions, they're so evocative, they're so vivid. You're almost transported into that scene. And that's, of course, the power of this book. We also need to bear in mind that Orlando, the central character in this book, lives more than 300 years. So it's the kind of journey that goes beyond limitations of time. And if you think that's strange, bear in mind what Virginia Woolf said. She said the true duration, and I'm not, you know, I'm just paraphrasing, but the true duration of of a human being's life is always a matter of dispute. You know, we don't really know how long actually human beings live. Uh, That's open for debate. And in that regard, we can ask this question, is Virginia Woolf alive today? I think she is. If we're talking about her today, if we're talking about her work today, I think she's very much alive today. So it's also interesting that after all these experiences, let's go back to the novel, after all these experiences, Orlando travels to Constantinople, to modern-day Istanbul, back then Constantinople, and there uh, Orlando experiences a transformation. He is metamorphosed into female. So Orlando the man becomes Orlando the woman. And at first glance, nothing changes because the character is the same, the personality is the same, the identity is the same. And Orlando doesn't think it's a huge, you know, thing to change um, sex in this way. She just carries on with her life as a female. However, at the same time, lots of things change because now the way the character is going to dress up, you know, the clothes, for instance, change dramatically or the society's perception of the character changes. So as she's writing about this, Virginia Woolf is able to say so much about gender norms, cultural boundaries, expectations, and she questions all of those layers. I also find it important that Orlando in Istanbul, in Constantinople, meets a Romani community, you know, a minority community, and she's fascinated by their nomadic lifestyle, by their peripatetic lifestyle. Eventually, she comes back to England, and when she returns to England, again, she meets um, writers and poets or, or, or colorful characters of the cultural elite, if I may put it this way, of the time. And I have a feeling that Virginia Woolf is actually quite critical of the literati and intelligentsia of that era. Um, So I think I should also tell you that I do not believe as a Turkish writer that it's a coincidence that Orlando experienced the transformation, the gender transformation in Istanbul, going back to that point, because Istanbul back then, but even today, but back then even more so, is a city of ambiguity, is a city of in between them. It is a city where so many different things come together in a very hybrid way, in a very chaotic and fluid way. There are no static identities, in my opinion. Istanbul is not a city of fixed identities. It is, it is a city of multiple belongings. So I don't think it's a coincidence that Orlando had this transformation in Istanbul. But coming back to England, uh, it's also important to me that when Orlando returns to, the UK, to England, she experiences, even though this is her motherland, she experiences the country almost through the eyes of an outsider. So once again, this theme of being an insider, being an outsider, being in between things is very much alive throughout this novel. I think Orlando is about journeys. It's about transformations, you know, and um, it takes you. It's so evocative. It takes you, transports you into so many different places and so many time, different time zones. But most importantly, as I said, this is a book about not quite fitting anywhere, being multiple, being fluid. To me, it is about threshold, you know, that very liminal space in between things. And that space actually can be a very productive place for art, but at the same time, it's a very lonely place for the artist. So if I may finish it with this, Whenever you feel lonely, whenever you feel like you don't quite fit anywhere, if you're looking for a book, I think this is the book to read. Virginia Woolf's Orlando.